let's explore Saber Form and six other spiritual poems. This is Lama Jigme Gyatso. Welcome to Meditate Like a Jedi. Today's first poem, Saber Form. I discovered the music of Simon and Garfunkel during a family road trip while I was still in junior high school. Recall some of the lyrics from their song, I Am A Rock. Hiding in my room, safe within my womb, I touch no one and no one touches me. I'm a rock, I'm an island, and a rock feels no pain, and an island never cries. The majority of human cultures laud the sociopathic tendencies to put no stock in the validation that comes from others. But such fairy tales of so-called strength are rooted in an abject ignorance of neuroscience. As healthy mammals, no less primates, evolution has selected that our midbrain's anterior gyrate and mirror neurons hardwire us for empathy and cooperation and respect. In days of yore, top-heavy, big-brained hominids, slow and weak of form, lacking prolific claw and fang, could only survive in mutual cooperation reinforced by empathy and respect. These feelings are not a symptom of weakness. They are a symptom of being a great ape. And as such, we have the perceptual acuity to notice what we feel and what we emote and how others treat us. And we can do all this in harmony with each inhalation. We can notice the pleasure and the pain and the glory and the grotesquerie. And because of the wiring of our underbrain, we have the ability to physically relax and thus mentally let go with every exhalation. And because of the wiring in our midbrain, we can ride our in-breaths momentum of centeredness and our out-breaths momentum of spontaneity and love others effortlessly and without contrivance. The liberation that the Buddha offers us is not the liberation from needing others. It is the liberation from the neurosis that denatures love into greed and hate and resentment. I have never seen a Buddha statue holding a hacksaw nor an ice cream scoop, nor in any way hinting that we are to emotionally lobotomize ourselves. The Buddha's techniques give us the freedom to feel what we feel and to think what we think without being controlled by them. To perceive in the absence of slavery is the freedom that meditation could give us, but only if we are taught it properly and we apply it consistently. Like a youngling practicing their lightsaber form until it becomes as natural as breathing. Today's second poem, Yaddle's Compassion. Behold the petty one-upsmanship of toxic masculinity for patriarchy 
is less about the shape of one's genitalia and more about the orientation of one's mind. For the drives of toxic masculinity have their seat in our brainstem, and like a silly Sith Lord, it concerns itself with the pettiness of power and prestige. Whereas the impulses of healing femininity have their seat in our midbrain, and just like Jedi Master Yaddle, seek the welfare of others. Today's third poem, Gastronomic. His belch entered the room before him, like a kind of gastronomic fanfare. Today's fourth poem, Fortunate Circumstances. I was recently asked, is it better to do good deeds or think good thoughts? I reject the premise of the question, for we do not have to choose between the two. In Tibet, it is taught that the highest form of compassion is spontaneous and uncontrived. Therefore, if we cultivate centered spontaneity, our intentions and actions could take care of themselves. But wait, how do we cultivate this centered spontaneity of which I speak? By practicing Buddha's contemplation and meditation and compassion, in Tibet, they are known as a view, a meditation, and action. The easiest way to practice view is to blend certain rhetorical questions with mantra recitation. The easiest way to practice meditation is to passively watch the play of mind in coordination with one's inhalation, and then to actively relax into the non-graspable nature of mind in harmony with one's exhalation. After having sat in meditation, the easiest way to train in action is to first briefly recall how although the mind's communication, bodies, and circumstances of all of our neighbors fellow earthlings, and all beings of all worlds conventionally seem to be lucid, resounding, sensual, and appearing. Yet ultimately, they are as non-graspable as a vast empty void, like a beautiful cloudless sky, the color of Kuntu Zangpo's body. Then secondly, one practices the love that wishes for all beings, that their minds would be joyful, their speech would be peaceful, or their bodies would be blissful, and their circumstances would be fortunate. Turning thusly every morning and every evening, we could condition ourselves to love and to let go spontaneously and habitually and easily and effectively. Today's fifth poem, Mind Itself. When teachers explain that the mind is clear, what do they mean? The mind is lucid. The mind is aware. It is aware of the five senses of sensation and flavor and scent and sound and sight, as well as the sixth sense of mind's awareness of its own emotions and intentions and reasoning and recollection and imagination. So during our meditations in breath, we could spontaneously notice any of these aspects or functions of mind. And during our meditation's out-breath, we could actively physically relax 
and as we do, we could mentally experience the non-graspability of that which we notice, as well as the non-graspability of the mind itself that perceives all the above. Today's sixth poem, Member of the Sith. I once knew a petty, cruel man who, although had promised to pay for his son's college education, looked for a way out of his pledge. So he added a proviso that if his son's grade point average dipped below an arbitrary level, he would cease to support his son's education, and the son would have to move out and seek gainful employment. To ensure his son's failure, that father selected the classes, loading the freshman with an inappropriate number of overly demanding classes. When the inevitable happened and the unsatisfactory grades were issued, the father wasted no time in cutting his son off and kicking him out. As if that was not enough, he strove to convince himself and his son that what he had done was in his son's best interest. But it really was not. Jim did not succeed in convincing his son, who never got over it. This sad tale of cruelty and betrayal and deceit and self-righteousness is not uncommon nor unheard of. That father had no lightsaber and no midichlorians. But make no mistake, he was as self-serving and cruel as any member of the Sith. Today's seventh and final poem, Define. I have encountered self-help gurus who insisted they were enlightened, yet could not define what that term meant, no less how the Buddha used it. Let us conclude with a simple call to action. This podcast will never have any advertisements. So support us monthly on PayPal and like us on your podcast service to help others find us just as you found us as well. If meditation has felt impossible or boring or just out of reach, you are welcome to register at meditatelikeajedi.org for the next series of live online meditation class webinars that meet once a week.